Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Amid new signs of progress in the fight against COVID-19, Governor Whitmer not ready to ease up. Tonight, it appears Michiganders will likely be under stay home, stay safe for part of the month of May. Glad you're with us for Local 4 News at 6. The biggest headline coming out of today's briefing from the governor involves the stay home directive that is due to expire late next week. She's not saying how long an extension would be, but left little doubt that it is coming. I want to be clear. We will likely need another short term extension of the stay home, stay safe order. When we do start to reengage, it will have to be very thoughtful and precise, mitigating risk to all and mitigating the risk of a second wave. But we will start to re-engage. We will have a plan and we will start to share that in more depth as we get closer to next week. The state is reporting just under 1,000 new cases over the past 24 hours, along with 113 more lives lost. 2,900 state workers across various departments are being laid off for 10 days. They'll retain their health insurance and qualify for unemployment. It's estimated the temporary layoffs will save the state about $5 million. Governor is saying the last businesses to reopen will be the ones whose existence depends on close contact. But many of those businesses are the most vulnerable as the shutdown lingers on. Rod Maloney live with more on that. Uh, Rod, uniquely hard for those who know their turn to reopen uh, won't come at the beginning, and you got a glimpse of that today. And there's no money coming in between, Devin, and that's the real rub for many of them. And in fact, uh, we talked to uh, Tiffany Royal, and you could call her the Ann Arbor Barber, and her business is teetering right now. We get paid, obviously, based on the amount of haircuts we do. Tiffany Royal, with her long, blonde, curly locks, is not your usual barber, and her shop is equally unique. Arcade Barbers, near the U of M campus, is an Ann Arbor staple that's operated since 1917. Tiffany employs nine other hair cutters there. The longer the shutdown goes, the tougher it gets. We're blowing through the savings pretty quickly. Um, Obviously, there's no mercy on your mortgage or the rent I'm paying for my store, I do still have to pay some rent. The only thing keeping her afloat right now is a GoFundMe page set up to keep the shop alive. And if it doesn't open until sometime this summer. It's very scary to think that I can be told when and where I can restart my business or find a way, you know, to function and support my family and pay my bills. Tiffany says her business is everything to her and anticipates a dramatic lifestyle change in order to keep it going. If I had to choose my business or my house, I would choose my business because I can I can go find a tiny apartment somewhere and, and start over in that sense and function. But if I lose my business, that is my nest egg, my world, my way of putting my kids through college. And there are no easy choices here, obviously. Now, one of the things she also said, and it's frustrating to her, is that she applied for all the loans, the unemployment and everything else, and neither she nor any of the barbers that she works with have received a dime. Back to you. So, so Rod, what is her comfort level of opening sooner rather than later? She's a little ambivalent, Devin. She, yeah. she understands that the, you know, the governor says, look, you, you can't be in close quarters. You have to be really careful. And she's going to work on exactly how that will look. But if you're going to a barber, you're going to, you know, they have to touch you yeah. in the face and the hair and the like. And that's a problem for her. But she says, I've got to get the business back going uh, just to be able to survive here. So it's a difficult choice and one that everybody's going to have to make here yeah. at some juncture. Brutal for so many. All right, Rod. Kim. Indeed. Well, on the other side of the spectrum are jobs that can be done with minimal con- t- co-worker contact. Detroit Mayor Mike Duggan said today some of the city's critical infrastructure staff could soon return with testing. Those who are repairing the potholes in our roads, those who are fixing uh, our water and sewer system, those who cut the grass uh, in our parks, clean up the illegal dump sites, uh, we are going to start to uh, make plans to bring our critical infrastructure staff back. Uh, Everybody will have to be tested and test negative. If you've been driving and you hit a pothole in Detroit, uh, I know we're behind, uh, but we're gonna get folks back as soon as we can safely bring them back, and I don't think it will be uh, too far away. 
We're hearing tonight from a nurse fired from her job after posting video footage from inside Sinai Grace Hospital. This was more than a month ago. Kanisha Barkai has filed a whistleblower lawsuit against the DMC. She tells our Sean Lay she'd been raising concerns inside the hospital before coronavirus hit. RN Kanisha Barkai first spoke out to us at local four about her concerns about Sinai Grace Hospital and what she said not being ready to handle the coronavirus outbreak. That was back in mid-March. She was soon fired by the DMC after she spoke out with us. Well, now she's fighting back with a whistleblower lawsuit. Well, I wasn't telling a story. I mean, it was the truth. And, you know, again, all we were asking for was help in some of these situations to make things better in the hospital. The DMC fired RN Kanisa Barkai during a pandemic for posting this 10 second video of her gearing up to see the first COVID-19 patient at Sinai Grace Hospital. She was told the video violated the DMC's social media policy. But Barkai says she had been meeting with hospital officials months before with major concerns about staffing and equipment. She thinks once she talked about those concerns, Concerns first on local for March 18th, she was fired for going public. We're nurses, you know, that's our job. You know, we fight for our patients and that's what I'm out here doing, not just for my patients, but also for my coworkers. Barkai has now filed a whistleblower lawsuit suing the DMC. Her attorney, Jim Razor, says if others want to speak out, they must first make an official complaint with state agencies to get whistleblower protection. You've got one of your top nurses that you fired during a pandemic when you need nurses the most which increases the load on all the other nurses there. And it's no wonder that they're finding dead bodies in the hallways. We first told you the state has now stepped in to investigate Sinai Grace and to try to help the hospital. Once she was fired, Barkai started Feed the Front Line, delivering food to nurses all over our area, still wanting to help out. It's been, it's been a positive experience for myself, but also um, I've had so many people reach out and just say thank you. And tonight, the DMC says they do not discuss pending litigation. Sean Lane, Local 4. All right, Sean. Well, concerns about spreading the coronavirus have most surgeries on hold, and that includes surgeries for many cancers. But what impact is that having on patients physically and emotionally? Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with a closer look at what's happening to those forced to wait. Doc. Well, you know, Kim, I don't think anyone considers surgery for breast cancer as elective, but the reality is all but the most serious cases have been postponed. We talked to a breast surgeon at Beaumont Dearborn about the challenges of caring for patients caught in a pandemic. Dealing with breast cancer in general is anxiety provoking under normal circumstances. But these are not normal circumstances, says Beaumont surgeon, Dr. Majd Abarabia. We have been postponing elective surgery. Elective means it's something that can wait a couple of uh, weeks or a uh, couple of months without putting the patient at risk. And thankfully, most breast cancer surgeries fall in that category. Most breast cancers are not aggressive enough that they need to be in the OR immediately. Who needs surgery now is decided on a case-by-case -case basis using national guidelines. For patients who have to wait, they are altering treatment plans, starting them on cancer drugs or chemo. And for women who need chemo, we start that sooner than later. We're hoping that pretty soon once things open up and um, it becomes less risky for the patients, we'll get them back into the OR and get their surgery done. Abravia says she has been so impressed with how her patients are handling this unprecedented event. They totally understand what we're dealing with and they're managing um, the, their feelings about it very, very well. You'd be amazed what you what you're capable of when you're, once you're put in a situation. Yeah, but nonetheless, it is very important. If you do feel a lump or notice changes in your breast during this time, please do not delay calling your doctor. They are still seeing patients that need to be seen, and they are taking numerous precautions to reduce any risk of exposure during that visit. But Doug, what about mammograms? They're on hold as well. So do they have any concerns about the delay in detecting new cases of cancer? Well, important point, not yet, but doctors do want you to reschedule those screenings as soon as possible once it's safe. A small delay won't really make a big difference in the majority of cases, but skipping that mammogram until next year certainly could have a negative impact. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Doc.
Well, it's not the college experience that they signed up for, and they want more of their money back. That's the argument some students are making in a lawsuit targeting universities, including Michigan, Michigan State, and Wayne State. Victor Williams has more on the money these students want returned and why. Victor. While these lawsuits are being filed left and right, these students, they believe that since they're now forced to take online classes, that they should be entitled to the in-class tuition that they have already paid for. And the same thing goes with university housing. If you have to move out of your apartment because of some natural disaster, you don't complain, but you don't expect to have to keep paying rent. Attorney David Fink says the same concept should apply to colleges and universities. If you pay in advance for a meal, and that meal can't be delivered at a restaurant, you don't expect to have to pay for that meal. That's exactly why he's filing several class action lawsuits on behalf of his clients against three of the top schools in Michigan. What they're objecting to is having to continue to pay for room and board that they're not receiving and having to pay full tuition as though they were in a classroom when in fact they're sitting at home on their computer getting online education that's not as effective and certainly shouldn't cost as much. University of Michigan, Wayne State University, and Michigan State are all listed as a few of the defendants. And there's a chance more of these lawsuits are on the way. That's all this is about. It's just about fairness. This is something that we believe, we hope the universities will want to resolve quickly so that come the next semester, students aren't faced with uncertainty. And this is only the beginning. Fink filed another lawsuit this afternoon on behalf of students at Western Michigan University. Victor Williams, Local 4. Yeah, tomorrow, a look at distance learning at the K through 12 level. We'll be taking a deeper dive to find out how it's working. And the answer is not the same for everyone. The number of kids who are actually able to log on to learn may surprise you. That's coming up tomorrow. All right, let's take a live look now at the White House as the president is just getting underway with the daily uh, briefing from the Coronavirus Task Force. We are streaming it live at clickondetroit.com. We're also monitoring it in the newsroom. And Lester Holt and the NBC Nightly News team will have the latest on the national COVID. COVID-19 response here coming up just about 20 minutes from now. All right, well, clouds and cold and more <laughs> clouds. Here's Ben. <laughs> yeah, and May is just around the corner. What gives? Yeah. Well, the snow is about to transition to rain, and we're also going to see some milder temperatures. All that coming up in just a few minutes. Local doctors want you to be aware of the medical scams happening online. I'm Hank Winchester. Help me, Hank. We'll expose the scam and show you how to protect